Hi there, nice to have you with us once again. Um, it's not a subject, uh, or it is a subject we, we have covered before. The whole thing about active and passive investing. And joining me in the studio this time around is Colin Neft. Colin is uh, an institutional asset consultant at Access. What I've got to ask you, what is an, it sounds like a really lonely title, but what does an institutional asset consultant actually do? Jeremy, in essence, is we basically advising retirement funds on their investment strategy mm -hmm. and hopefully through good investment strategy that can lead to better retirement outcomes for the underlying members of the funds. It's a very general question but I mean at the moment given markets being up and down and all over the place how generally how are our retirement funds looking? Are, are, we, are we looking all right? Jeremy, uh, I've done some work over the last 10 years. Yeah. So now I'm really taking out the noise of short-term fluctuations. The last 10 years have been the best over the last 40 years for retirement funds in South Africa. Oh, really? So we've actually had a wonderful period of returns. And I'm really referring to returns relative to inflation, mm. kind of your real returns. So the last 10 years uh, have actually been spectacular in the long-term context. And people don't realize that we're very fixated on the short term. Mm. Mm. And, you know, we do tend to, I think we wired maybe to uh, stress the negatives. But uh, people don't realize the last 10 years you've done very well if you've been a retirement fund member. Oh, very good. That's, mm. that's nice to hear because you, you hear, and this is once again short-term noise, you hear about... Uh, pensioners these days under severe stress because of very low interest rates that they're getting on savings that they made. Yes. Uh, so it is good to hear that the pension funds themselves seem to be in a, in a good space and hopefully we hold thumbs that that continues. Um, right, for those, as I said, we have covered the subject before, looking at it from various different angles. But let's just go back to the basics here. For people who don't understand what we're talking about when we're talking about active versus passive um, uh, management. Okay. Passive management, uh, if you really want to break it down, it's basically it's an investment approach which is trying to replicate the returns on a recognized index. So, for example, here in South Africa, the All Share Index mm -hmm. is a recognized proxy for the performance of listed stocks in South Africa. And basically, to get the performance of that index, you need to go into an index fund. Just remember, the index is a notional or paper-based thing. So you can't invest directly into an index. You need to go into an index fund. And that fund is trying to mimic the performance of the index. So as you can see, it's kind of there's something in place. You're trying to track it. Whereas on the other side, active management is fund managers who are doing a lot of research. They're looking at companies. And they may be consciously actually trying to beat the index. So it's kind of what they call a benchmark cognizant approach. They know what the benchmark looks like and they want to take positions in stocks that they think are going to beat the index. But there is a variation of that. There are many subtleties to active management. But on the other spectrum or the other side of uh, active management is you've got fund managers who just want to make a good selections. They want to select stocks that they believe offer very, very good opportunities, often undervalued relative to their underlying business value. And they want to do well on that basis. And then indirectly, over time look to outperform the index. It's an approach kind of you called uh, benchmark agnostic. Is It's active management, but you're not really focused on the benchmark when you make uh, additions to your portfolio. But there, I would imagine there is also, it's, it's not a black and white area. There, there is a gray area in there, in there as well where you would have maybe part of your portfolio which is actively managed and part of your portfolio which is passively managed. Absolutely. And I think uh, investors will do themselves justice if they embrace both approaches. And uh, if you can take the best of active and the best of passive management into account, you've actually structured you know, a very sound portfolio. Unfortunately, the debate up to now has actually been of uh, a low quality in that whenever this topic is debated, people often think, I need to be in one of two camps. Mm. I, neither, I either need to be active or I need to be passive. But I think a healthier debate is to understand both approaches to investing 
And uh, more and more we're seeing, particularly within institutional investors such as retirement funds, they are combining active and passive. And active and passive really sit on a continuum of investment management styles and there's many subtleties and there are many ways to actually do active management and even passive management. There's various ways of actually putting index tracking funds together. So, you know, look at it as a, look at it as a continuum and there can be some middle ground where you can use the best of both. For, for guys like me, for example, mm. I've got money to invest. I'm not quite sure where to put it. The, the stock market to me is a scary monster that can come and gobble up all your money and take it away and spit it out. Mm. Um, so I am wary of equities. Would it be better for me then, because I know nothing about the stock market. Oh, well, I can't say I know nothing. I know very little about it. And I think there, I think there are a lot of people li like me um, who watch this show who, who do have money and they do want to invest mm. and they do want to grow their wealth. But they're just not sure where to turn. Mm. Where, where would you be pointing me right now? I'll start by saying that uh, often the question is asked, well, which is the best approach? Mm. Which is, uh, you know, How long again, is a piece of string? exactly. Yeah. Uh, a very simplistic question. And basically, there is no definitive answer. Mm. It's very dependent on the particular uh, market that we're in. And the relationship actually has a certain cyclicality to it. In some markets, uh, indices do very well, passive management does well, and in other market environments, active management does very well. So they both kind of have their periods where they outperform. But one of the things that's important is what is the relative price between the two? And this is a good way to look at it, is if active management is expensive, that does kind of favor low cost passive management. But if passive management is not low cost and there is some uh, expensive tracker funds around, then all things equal, that maybe leads you towards active management if that is reasonably priced. So for me, it's all in the relative pricing. Another thing though is certain markets, South Africa is not one of them, have had biases. Now, for example, in the United States, passive has done particularly well versus active. Again, it's a very efficient market, and generally their passive funds uh, are very well priced, i.e. low cost. Okay. But you look at another market, such as New Zealand, I've spent some time in, in that country, and active management has done very well in New Zealand. I outperformed the indices by uh, a fairly substantial margin. So there's various subtleties, depending on the region or the country, depending on the relative pricing, depending, you know, as I say, there's a lot of Passive management in South Africa, exchange traded funds have uh, you know, been one of the big investment themes over the last 10 years. But if it's not low cost, then passive is at a disadvantage. And the same with active management. If it's too highly priced, then it's the differential between active and passive management is such that active managers as a group have too much of a hurdle to overcome. That cost hurdle becomes uh, a very, very tough hurdle to beat. Okay, two questions out of that. Mm. Firstly, where would you put the JSE as an exchange on that continuum you were talking about? Yes. And the second thing is, what is a costly passive fund? What sort of costs are we looking at? Yes. Or what should we be looking for, rather? Okay. Um, let me just start with the second question. Is on average, passive equity funds in South Africa kind of in the general equity category around about uh, 0.7 of a percent or what we call 70 basis points. Okay. Actively managed funds on average are about 1% more than that, around about 1.7%. So the differential is around 1% mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of international norms that is quite high. Okay, mm -hmm. But we're talking about averages now and when you look at individual circumstances, I, X, Y, Z, tracker fund, versus uh, ABC actively managed funds, you need to look at that particular uh, differential. So it actually can depend on what funds that you're actually looking at. But when I look at the averages, active management is, uh, in my opinion, slightly overpriced in South Africa. And active management as an approach will be a lot more competitive if the fees come down, I would say somewhere between a quarter of a percent and maybe 0.35 of a percent. Okay, but having said that though, if, if I'm approached by an active trader who is looking for my money, mm. 
And that person can show me that they are tracking, let's say, 3% above any passive fund that you can get. I may be prepared to say, you know what, for another 2% on top of that, mm -hmm. I'm prepared to take the extra 2% and lose 1%. Yes. So I suppose it depends on, yes. on where you as an investor also sit. Mm -hmm. You may be more risk aggressive than the person next to you. I suppose that, 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 that becomes yes. part of the equation. Just remember a lot of the kind of the outperformance that 3% that you refer to is obviously in the past. Mm. There is no guarantee that that will continue yep, into exactly. the future. And yeah. what we've seen is that good recent outperformance is often followed by periods of future underperformance. Things tend to cancel themselves out in investing. And I will mention that a level of 3% above the index is very, very high by historical standards. For example, a Warren Buffett doesn't even beat the indices by that level. So if you can find a manager who can outperform the index by 3%, you've done very well. And at the same time, there are managers who do well and do beat the indices over periods of time. And you know, there is uh, some uh, skill in trying to identify those managers. But the thing is, to tap into that outperformance, you've got to identify the manager in advance mm. of the outperformance. And that is tricky. OK, so just to wrap that up then, you're looking at around about 1.7-ish percent for active. And if you're looking at anything above Nought point. If you're looking at anything above one percent on a on a passive management scale, you're pa you're, you're paying yeah. too much. Yeah. For me, one percent on on passive is too high, and I'd be looking at kind of general equity funds that are are tracking the all share index to be around about half a percent. I think that's there or there. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Let's just come back to the JSE and, and where you would position that in, 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 the, in the marketplace. Uh, we're going to a commercial break uh, very soon, but let's just nail that one down before we get out of this part yep. of the show. I would classify the JSE as a fairly efficient market. There's no such thing as a perfectly efficient market. So it means there's always going to be place for active management. Um, the other thing is most markets need a combination of active and passive management. Because when you look at it, passive managers are price takers, active management are price makers. And markets need a combination of both. So the trend worldwide at the moment is for passive to be gaining market share, but I believe all markets at some level will find a natural balance between active managers and passive managers participating in the market. But at the moment, the market share for indexing or passive management is increasing worldwide, and South Africa is no different. Okay, so we're, we're, we are following the right trend here mm. on, on our exchange. That's correct. The trend is for more assets to be passively managed and for the market share of actively managed assets to be declining.